What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, where we continue here with the phenomenal read of the, well, must read Bitcoin Optech newsletter. And thank you very much, of course, to the Optech crew who makes this amazing information available to us all. And uh, let's get into it with newsletter number 10 on August 28th, 2019. This week's newsletter includes information about the first public release candidate for Bitcoin Core, news about the BIP-151 P2P protocol encryption and a potential future soft fork, top questions and answers from the Bitcoin Stack Exchange and some notable mergers in popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items. Allocate time to test Bitcoin Core version 0.17, the second release candidate. Bitcoin Core has been uploaded binaries for 0.17 release candidate 2. Testing is greatly appreciated and can help ensure the quality of the final release. News. PR pull request open for initial BIP151 support. Jonas Schnelli has opened a pull request to Bitcoin Core providing an initial implementation of BIP151 encryption for the peer-to-peer -peer network protocol. He also has an updated draft of the BIP151 specification that incorporates changes that he has made in the development of the implementation. If accepted, this will allow both full nodes and lightweight clients to communicate blocks, transactions, and control messages without ISPs being able to eavesdrop on the connections. This which can make it harder to determine which program originated a transaction, especially in combination with Bitcoin's core existing transaction origin protection or future proposals such as the amazing Dandelion protocol. Schnelli is also working with other developers to implement and test the new HOPE key exchange protocol, which is believed to be resistant to attacks by quantum computers so that an eavesdropper who records communication between two peers today won't be able to decrypt that data in the future where they possess a fast quantum computer. Requested for soft forks, a solution to the time warp attack. Bitcoin blocks include the time the block was supposedly connect, created by a miner. These timestamps are used to adjust the difficulty of mining blocks so that a block is produced on average every 10 minutes. However, the time warp attack allows miners representing a large fraction of the network hash rate to consi consistently lie about when a block was created over a long period of time uh, in order to lower the difficulty even as blocks are being produced more frequently than every 10 minutes. Gregory Maxwell has asked the Bitcoin protocol development list, uh, a development mailing list, for proposed soft fork solutions uh, to the attack before the proposal is before he proposed his own solution. So far, Jonas Lau has proposed one technique. Note, anyone monitoring the blockchain for this type of attack would have at least one month's notice before any significant damage was done. For, the last re for that reason, and because there are multiple known methods for countering the attack with varying trade-offs, fixing the time warp attack has never been considered urgent. However, if the attacker risks can be mitigated fully or partially by a non-controversial soft fork, that would certainly be nice. Well, but after all, a time warp attack just has such a cool name that I don't know if fixing it would really do that much. I mean, it's a time warp attack. Come on. <laughs> Selected Q&A from the Bitcoin Stack Exchange. The Bitcoin Stack Exchange is, of course, one of the first places where Optech contributors look for answers to their own questions or, when we have a few spare moments of time, help answer other people's questions. In this monthly feature, we highlight some of the top voted questions and answers made since our last update. First, can you create empty Bitcoin transactions? Is it possible to create Bitcoin transactions of zero value, or in other words, sending zero Bitcoin to an address? And this question was proposed by user 
number number. <laughs> and here's the answer by Andrew Chow. Yes, it is possible and allowed by the consensus rules to create zero value outputs. Such outputs can even be spent. However, such outputs are also non-standard and thus transactions with zero value outputs will not be relayed. They can still be mined into blocks by a miner directly, inserting the transaction into a block they are mining. So yes, you can send zero Bitcoin, and just nobody's gonna care. And you're gonna lose money because of mining fees. Can SPV clients offer proof of absence of a transaction? So the question proposed by D. Zach. So light SPV clients give the user the ability to obtain Merkle proofs from a full node that a given transaction is included in a block. Is there some cryptographic mechanism in which an SPV client could obtain proof that a transaction or type of transaction is not included in a block while still being relatively light where um, the log of n um, I don't know what that mathematical function means, <laughs> so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> asking, a uh, asking for a layer two solution. And we have here a nice answer by Gregory Maxwell, of course, a prolific Bitcoin Core developer and contributor. There are no known ways to do this with the current consensus rules, nor does it seem likely, except via computationally expensive generated CPK. The normal way to make compact proof of non-membership is to have a hash tree, which is, orders by, which is ordered by the key you're looking to prove non-membership on. The proof is just two neighbors that are greater and lesser than the key in question. To show non-membership in a block with the general CKP, like bulletproofs, you would have to write an arithmetic circuit that computes the hash root of a block and also scans over transactions looking for the thing of interest. If done using a bulletproof, the, the proof would be log in the size of the circuit and that time and take time to prove and verify linear in size. So they'd be somewhat slow, but bandwidth efficient. Very nice answer. I'm definitely not claiming that I understood a single bit of that, uh, but it's very good information of which I will try to process and understand. Is it possible to convert an address from pay to public key hash to pay to script hash? Is it possible to convert a pay to public key address to a pay to script, pay to script hash address? Also, will the balance of the paid to public key hash address carry over to the paid to script hash address? This is a question asked by John and edited by Merch. And it is answered by Peter Woolley. Don't. <laughs> well, that was easy. <laughs> Addresses are determined by the wallet. It's the receiver's wallet saying, I will accept payments when I, when it's, when it arrives at address X. Sending it to other addresses may mean that wallets do not recognize it. Worst case, if the receiver has some hardware security module that stores the key, it may literally be impossible to even recover the funds when sent to the wrong address. This is not different from owing a friend some money and repaying them by burying an envelope with cash in their lawn. <laughs> you may technically consider that the transfer of funds to them, but it's not done in a matter known or even recognizable by them. <laughs> it's very hard to consider it a payment. That is a hilarious analogy and very true. As a sender should... As a sender, you shouldn't care about what type of address the receiver gives you and certainly not try to guess how you can modify it. As a receiver, if you want to give out a pay to script hash address, presumably because you want multi-sig security or SegWit, just upgrade your wallet to software that supports that feature and create the new address. 
And will the balance of a pay to public key hash address carry over to the pay to script hash address? No, addresses don't have balances. Short, precise, and absolutely true. UTXOs have end value fields, addresses do not. Phenomenal questions and answers here on the Bitcoin Stack Exchange. Notable commits. Notable commits this week in Bitcoin Core, LND, and C Lightning. Remember, a new merges to Bitcoin Core are made to its master development branch and are unlikely to become part of the upcoming version 0.17 release. You probably have to wait until version 0.18 in about six months from now. There's a Bitcoin Core commit that adds the functions necessary to allow Bitcoin Core to generate BIP158 compact block filters. This code isn't currently used in Bitcoin Core, but FutureWork is expected to use these functions to provide two features. First, BIP157 supports for sending filters to light clients over the peer-to-peer -peer network protocol. This can allow peer-to-peer -peer lightweight wallets to find blocks with transactions that affect their wallet much more privately than currently possible with BIP37 BIP Bloom filters. Again, this is the reversed Golomb Rice filters. Faster rescans for the Bitcoin Core built in wallet, and occasionally users of Bitcoin Core need to rescan the blockchain to see if any historic transaction affected their wallet. For example, when they import a new private key or public key or address. This currently takes over an hour, even on modern desktops. But users with local BIP157 filters will be able to perform the rescan much faster and still with information theoretical perfect privacy, which, light, which lightweight clients do not have. Another Bitcoin Core merge adds a field to the get raw mempool, to the get mempool entry, to get mempool ancestor, and to get mempool descendants RPC results to display whether or not a transaction opts in signaling its spender wants it to be replaced by a transaction spending any of the same inputs with a higher fee as described with BIP125. A sea lightning commit tagged its first release candidate for version 0.16.1. Further, in C-Lightning reduces the number of places uh, where it refers to 1,000 weight units as SIPA and began calling them by the more widely accepted term kilo weights. C-Lightning made multiple improvements to how to handle its fees, both for on-chain transactions to open and close channels where C-Lightning outsources fee estimation to Bitcoin Core, and also for fees in payment channels themselves. C-Lightning further implemented additional parts of Bolt 2, particularly related to the option data loss protect field to improve handling of cases where you, your node appears to have lost essential data, a commitment value, or the removal, the remote node it's sending invalid commitments and data and possible deliberately lying. Peers, you really truly have to subscribe to the amazing Bitcoin Optech newsletter. As you know by now, it is, in my opinion, the best, most in-depth and intense uh, summary of what is going on in Bitcoin. And absolutely, thank you, thank you so much to all the amazing, amazing contributors here to this Bitcoin Optech newsletter. And of course, to all the amazing Bitcoin uh, contributors in general. Uh, working here with this open source family uh, is absolutely beautiful. And I'm really looking forward to continue reading these newsletters to you in a hopefully approachable uh, and lightweight fashion uh, so that you, you can accumulate this information and try to understand it. I know it's not easy. I know that for sure I'm not understanding all of it. Uh, but well, all we can do is accumulate the information and try to understand it. If you have any questions, be active in the community and ask, 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 because that is a really nice way of uh, conveying information in a different way so that you can more easily understand it. Pierce, thank you very much for joining me here today and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.